in this tutorial, we're going to go into detail about setting up and connecting your Lost Mandy Gemini 2 to your computer. Before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about what exactly is the Gemini 2. We get a lot of questions about what is the Gemini 2, how does it relate to the hand controller, and which parts are required to use the system. The Gemini 2 is the heart and brains of the Lost Mandy Precision Equatorial Mounts. It provides all of the connectivity and instructions for how to run the motors, how to slew to different places, keeps track of the coordinates, deals with the tracking, the guiding, pretty much everything that goes into the mount aside from the hardware is controlled by this little unit. We also get a lot of questions about whether or not the hand controller is required to use the Gemini, and the answer is no. It is a great little utility, but it is just one more client that connects to the Gemini. Now the hand controller does have a special relationship with the Gemini. It's obviously a purpose-built piece of hardware. It's got functionality and buttons and things to make working with the Gemini much easier. It does have the ability to get firmware updates from the Gemini and you can load catalogs in addition directly from the Gemini to the hand controller. Let's take a look at the ports and functions of the hardware of the Gemini 2. First, we have the power switch. Of course, it does on and off, and it's a pretty straightforward thing. The Gemini takes 12 to 18 volts DC through its port here on the side. Although it does work from 12 to 18 volts, generally speaking, it does better at higher voltages. The AC-DC power supply we offer for the Gemini here at Los Mandy is a 15 volt 3 amp power source. Next, we have the motor connections for the right ascension and declination motors. These are keyed motor ports, so you can only insert the cables in one way. They are not interchangeable, so you don't want to swap these around or you're going to get very strange results when it comes to slewing and tracking. Next, we have the Ethernet port for connecting via Ethernet, and we're going to cover that in a little bit more detail here shortly. Next is the USB port for connecting your Gemini to your computer. This is a square style USB 2.0 type B port, B as in Brian. These are very common cables and are known to be used as USB printer cables and you can buy them pretty much anywhere and they're very inexpensive. Next is the five volt USB power port. This is a type A power port that provides up to 500 milliamps of power. This is great for powering things like a micro router or some versions of the SkyFi module where you can charge the battery via USB. The port labeled HC is for the Lost Mandy hand controller. It works only with our hand controllers, so of course you want to use just that type in there and not plug the hand controller in any other port. The next port is the serial or GPS port. This is where you would plug in a GPS unit from Lost Mandy that we offer or in some cases there are certain serial devices like some versions of the SkyFi module that allow you to control your Lost Mandy mount through Sky Safari. Port F and Port E are reserved for future, so just don't put anything in there, it's not a big deal. In fact, you might wanna grab some of those silicon plugs we've talked about in other tutorials and just plug them up for right now. The auto guider port does allow you to connect your guide camera to the Lost Mandy mount and guide in this fashion. This is what's known as ST4 style guiding. However, if you're using this port, you really don't want to. This is an outdated way of doing it. And the things that we're gonna talk about in terms of connecting the Gemini to your computer are more modern versions of doing this and it's gonna allow you to auto guide without using this port. So now that you've been introduced to the hardware of the Gemini 2, let's talk about how to connect this to your computer. First, from a cabling standpoint, there are a couple options you have. It really boils down to primarily Ethernet and USB. From a mount performance standpoint, there isn't going to be any difference between whether you use Ethernet or USB. So don't feel like you're gonna give anything up by going one way or another. They're gonna perform exactly the same when you're out there each night imaging or observing. The main differences are that USB is generally speaking much easier to set up and use and you can plug it in and get it going almost immediately. The Ethernet does require some configuration if you're doing direct Ethernet connection and we have an entire tutorial on how to do this that I'm going to put a link in the details below. Alternately, you can plug this into your home router or a dedicated micro router and it's going to give you some additional functionality here. Specifically, connecting via Ethernet gives you the opportunity to access the built-in web server of the Gemini 2 unit. And yes, it does have a built-in web server. 
It's got a bunch of pages that allow you to see and adjust various settings about the Gemini computer. And also, and perhaps most valuable, you can directly update the firmware in the Gemini 2 unit and in the hand control unit, either via the GFU, which is the Gemini firmware update utility that you can download and use to connect to the internet and upload these via ethernet to the Gemini. Or you can use the web page that's built into the web server to update your firmware. A lot of times if people are just starting out, I recommend just going with the USB cable for now. It just plugs it in and pretty much with a couple of settings, just boots up and works almost immediately. So first we're gonna cover how to connect via USB. The first thing you're gonna need is the right USB cable. So I have an example here. This is one I just bought off of Amazon. It's again, a USB 2.0 printer cable, but technically it's a USB 2.0 type A connection to a type B connection. And there's that little connector right there. So what you would do is you would plug this into your computer on one end, and then you would plug this sort of squarish part uh, into your Gemini and then power it on. Now US cables do have a length limit and for USB 2.0, that's about 15 feet. So if you have a need to run something longer than 15 feet, you have a couple options. First, you can use a USB cable with an active or powered hub. Those present some of their own challenges, so kind of works sometimes, kind of not, but you definitely want a high quality USB powered hub if that's, the, if that's the direction you're headed in. The second thing to think about is you might buy a dedicated computer or laptop and place that near your mount so you don't need an extended run for a USB cable. If you really do need a distance between your Gemini and your computer that's longer than 15 feet, you might consider using ethernet. These are inexpensive cabling and you can use a router or a micro router between them to create even more distance. So that's a really nice way to do that. Again, if you need that extra length. For Windows computers, however you're going to connect, you're going to need the ASCOM software. So we're gonna head over to the ascom-standards.org website to download a couple pieces of software that we're gonna to need to make this work. The first thing is we're gonna download the platform and you'll see on the home page on the right hand side, there is a download button right there on the front that's gonna allow you to download the platform. Now, as of this writing, 6.5 SP1 was the latest version. They've now just released version 6.6. Far as we can tell, everything works great, so you can go ahead and download version 6.6. .6. When you go through and install this software on your computer, it may complain about some dependencies about .NET Framework. Just follow along the instructions and make sure you download all the components that are needed to make the ASCOM platform work. And that is gonna be the first thing you're going to need to install. The next thing you're gonna to need to download and install is the ASCOM driver for the Gemini. Now the name of this driver is GeminiTelescope.net and that sometimes catches people. They think because of the .net there's a website like GeminiTelescope.net, that's a URL, it's not. It's just the name of the ASCOM driver and there's a little bit of application functionality in there as well. So from the ASCOMstandards.org website, we're gonna go into drivers and other downloads and then into the telescope slash mount section. And here, when you scroll down, it is alphabetical. You'll go down to the G for Gemini telescope.net and you'll see here, you can download it. The latest version as of this tutorial is 1.0.75. You just click the download button. It will download to your computer. And again, just run through the installer and follow the instructions. It should be super straightforward. Next, we're gonna connect the computer in the Gemini using the USB cable. So with the power off on the Gemini, we're gonna plug in the USB cable. Then we're gonna plug it into any available USB port on your computer. You can use USB 2.0, 3.0, 3.1, 3.2 ports. They all should be backwards compatible with the USB 2.0 spec. At this point, you might hear a little ding or your computer might notify you that it's setting up this new USB device. That's fine. All of the hardware drivers that you need for accessing the Gemini are built into Windows 10 and later versions of Windows. When that's finished, we can now power on our Gemini and go ahead and configure the GeminiTelescope.net application to connect to our Gemini. 
The GeminiTelescope.net application has an icon that looks like this. So let's go ahead and double click this application and get it launched. In a moment, it will bring up the window for the GeminiTelescope.net application. This is where you can control the mount and also configure a number of options related to the driver. Before we get into this, I want to point out that under the setup menu, there is an item called help. And this provides a link to the entire online user manual for GeminiTelescope.net. It's very good and thorough documentation. I encourage you to take a look at that. It's gonna answer a lot of questions you may have now or into the future. Now we're gonna configure the connection to the mount. This is done under the setup menu under configure telescope. Now there's a lot of options in here. Some of them you can adjust, some of them are just read only, but the one we're interested in right now is communications. So when we look at the COM port, we have a choice between ethernet or a number of COM ports that are listed by number, COM3, COM4, and so forth. And those are the USB style connections. COM port is a serial connection uh, that of course goes through USB, but this is where you're gonna find your Gemini controller. So in this case, we are gonna choose a COM port and actually it's not super critical that you choose any specific one. It's nice to know if you pick the right one, but this auto detect Gemini on other ports will make sure that if this is not the right port, it will check the other ports to see if Gemini is connected there. And when it does find the Gemini, it's gonna connect. This is the only setting that we need to do right now to connect to the mount. So let's click okay. And now we're going to connect to the mount. We use the connect button on the bottom of this screen. When we click it, you'll see some additional windows about attempting to connect. And if it's successful and you're using the default values, it will ask you if you want to warm start, warm restart, or cold start the mount. So now your mount is connected. You can see that tracking is enabled, the mount is tracking in sidereal time, and you are good to go. If you want to try out the soft controllers of the GeminiTelescope.net, first make sure your telescope is set up correctly. You want to make sure that it's balanced and everything is connected properly so you avoid any issues. We can go ahead and change the speed from guide to slew or from G to S and then clicking and holding on any of these diamond shaped buttons are going to move either the declination or the right ascension axis. And you can play around and see that your computer directly controls the mount. If you haven't already, you can unplug the hand controller and you'll see that these functions all work perfectly fine in the same way whether the hand controller is plugged in or not. Now at this point, if you're having problems connecting, there's a couple things you can try. One thing you can try is using a different COM port in the telescope setup information. The other thing is that you can try a different USB cable. Sometimes the cables are just not good for some reason. Or you can try a different USB port on your computer. In all cases, make sure that the ASCOM platform and that the GeminiTelescope.net driver are all installed and working properly. Next, let's talk about how to connect the Gemini via Ethernet. This is a standard RJ45 port, so pretty much any ethernet cable is going to work. The data requirements for controlling the mount are really very minimal, so just a CAT5 cable will work perfectly fine. You're not gonna see any added benefit from CAT6, CAT7, or even CAT8. You might get some benefit in terms of the distances that the ethernet cables are rated for, but really from a performance standpoint, they're all gonna work pretty much the same when it comes to the Gemini. There are two main ways to connect the Gemini via Ethernet to your computer. The first is a direct connection where you take an Ethernet cable and plug one end to the Gemini and the other end directly into your computer port and bypass any sort of hub or router configuration. In this case, we have an existing tutorial. And again, I'm going to put the link down below so you can take a look at how to do it in some detail. This is not typically the way that Ethernet was designed to be used, and it does involve a little bit of typing in IP addresses and it's a little bit of technical know-how. If you're comfortable doing that, it works great, no problem. If you're not, then the second approach probably is better for you. The second and probably more common way to connect the Gemini to your computer via Ethernet is by using a router. This can be either your home router or a router that you buy that's specifically for your astronomy setup. This is an example of a micro router. It's from gl.inet. It is also known sometimes as a travel router. It's a very small device. It's typically powered via USB in some fashion, and it gives a few hard connection ports as well as Wi-Fi 
and it's a great way to add wireless and wired ethernet connectivity between your Gemini and your computer. To connect via router, you would first take the Gemini and an ethernet cable and plug that into the router. Then you would connect your computer to the router if it isn't already connected by using an ethernet cable from the computer's ethernet port into the router itself. Now that your computer and Gemini are both connected to the router, you can power on the Gemini and we will need to configure the GeminiTelescope.net application for ethernet. So again, we are gonna go under the setup menu and we're gonna choose configure telescope. And we are again gonna focus on the communications part of this interface. Instead of a COM port, we are now gonna choose ethernet. Now, if it's already selected, you're gonna to wanna to click that button and reselect ethernet because what's gonna happen is it will bring up the network settings. And in this dialog box, we're gonna stick with some defaults here. First, we're gonna enable the NetBIOS name resolution, or rather just leave it enabled. This allows us to type in the name of the Gemini rather than the specific IP address. Second of all, we're gonna use UDP and we're gonna leave it at port 11110. Under Gemini IP address, we can just leave the name Gemini and NetBIOS is going to resolve that to the correct IP address via the router. The default username for the Gemini is admin, all lowercase and the password is blank. So we're gonna go ahead and leave those set up and we're gonna leave bypass proxy enabled. You also want to make sure to enable DHCP. This is an important option that enables the Gemini to get its IP address from the router and ensures that the computer and the router and the Gemini can all speak together. So go ahead and click OK and click OK again. And now we can use the connect button to connect the Gemini via ethernet. So that should be it, and your ethernet connection to your Gemini should be live and active. If you run into problems, there are a few things that you can try. First, you can power off and power on your Gemini and try again. Second, you can use the Gemini hand controller to check the IP address of the Gemini. And from the hand controller, you can go to Menu, System, Network. If the IP address at the top is the default IP address, and that is 192.168.1.110. That means that your Gemini computer did not receive a network address from your router and it's not properly connected. So you wanna go back and double check your physical connections and make sure that everything is connected properly and that your cable is working. Another thing you can look at is your router's built-in web pages that will show you the list of connected clients and the IP addresses of those clients. You should see your computer and Gemini listed as two of the clients that are connected. If not, then there's a physical connection that's not happening somewhere with that router and needs to be addressed. So that sums up how you can connect your Gemini to your Windows computer via the ASCOM standard. There are also other ways and other platforms you can use to connect your Gemini to your computer. If you use an Apple Mac or a Linux computer, you can use a standard known as Indie to connect. The link to the Indie website is included in the description of this video, so take a look there for it. It's a little bit different and a little bit more complicated, but the same options are gonna be available for you to connect the Gemini, that being USB or ethernet. Another option is using a purpose-built device like ZWO ASI Air. Now this is an interesting little device I think it's roughly based on Raspberry Pi. And the idea is to provide more of an appliance that has all the features built into it rather than a computer and then you kind of got to figure out how to make it all work. The great thing about this is it absolutely works with Gemini. You just plug it in, you can use USB or ethernet. I personally have only used USB and it's worked absolutely seamlessly. The ethernet part seems to require a little bit more configuration but it certainly does work. With the ASI Air, you have pretty much all the features you need for doing deep space and other types of imaging, and it's a very, very simple application to use. It does require a mobile device, such as an iOS device or Android device. Typically, people use it with a tablet because it has a nice big interface, but it does require the use of some sort of mobile device to make it work. We're gonna do a separate video on the ASI Air to talk through all the details, but just remember that the same options are available for you to connect your Gemini. That's USB or ethernet.